Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So now I can hear myself, I feel better. Uh, MashaAllah, thank you sister. Um, in, uh, in Arabic, especially in Moroccan Arabic, we say, A'udhu billahi mimman yaqudu ana. So when Imam asked me for my bio, uh, I, I find it uh, so hard to talk about myself, and especially when to mention the accomplishment. Uh, but I did that not out of pride, but out of sharing, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so as for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you, O oh human being, you should remember and remind people of that and remind yourself. So, and the other reason I, I wanted to say that, because we want our future generation to navigate this system. And one of the ways to navigate the system is through education. And education is our working capital that cannot be frozen. If you have money in the bank and the government or the state decide to freeze your assets, it will be frozen. And we see it all over the world. But alhamdulillah for education is the assets that cannot be frozen and you can take it with you wherever you go. It is a responsibility as well. So while it is a source of pride, a source of self-esteem and self-efficacy that you have done it and you can do others, it is a matter of responsibility that each one of us will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what have you learned? Why did you learn it? and what did you do with it? To the point that education and money are equivalent. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us, how did you earn your money? Where did you spend it? And how did you spend it? So if Allah is going to ask you about your education, is going to ask you about your money, wealth, then we can safely say, that education and money are equal in the sense that they are our assets and we need to economize on them. So today why I'm here and what do I need to talk about? The topic is engaging our children in learning. How do we engage our children in learning? And if you think about this question, it is the question about how to engage our children. Meaning the responsibility first and foremost is on us as parents. Either our immediate relationship, which is we are the parents, or when we can look at it at a global perspective, from a global perspective, and it is the community. Each one of us here is a parent in the absentia of the immediate parent. And why do we have to engage our children in learning? So, and then why do we have to engage our children in learning? And these are the two questions. What is to be learned? Why to be learned? And how can we facilitate that for our children to learn? So let's start with what is to be learned. In the life context, anything that will benefit your life and the life of others is worthy of learning. And that could be in all fields of life. Could be carpentry, mechanics, painting, learning, uh, engineering, cyber security, anything else. In the context of our faith is to learn Al-Quran and the Sunnah and to learn Arabic 
because is honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn by uh, honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose it for his message to be conveyed to all people and more than that to all creatures including human beings and genes. So engaging our children in learning Al Quran and the benefits of it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man Qara'a Harfan Min Al Quran Aw Man Qara'a Harfan Min Kitab Allah Falahu Bihi Hasana Wal Hasana to be Ashri Amthaliha La Akulu Alif La Mim Harf Walakin Alif Harf Wa Lamun Harf Wa Mimun Harf Rawahu Termidi the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling his companion and he is telling us that whoever read a letter from the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to reward him for each letter with one good deed, Hasana. Wal Hasana to be Ashri Amthaliha and every Hasana will be multiplied by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Ten times, and he said, "La aqulu alif la mim harf." As you know, in certain surah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala starts with like the combination of different letters: alif la mim, yasin, taha, kaf, ha, ya, ain, sad, and so on and so forth. So he said, "La aqulu alif la mim harf," ولكن alif is harf, ولامون is harf, وميمون is harf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was telling some sister this morning in the school, who have just memorized Wateen. I say, if you count how many deeds you have just made, Hasanat, because you can count how many letters in Surah and then multiply it by 10 times. It would be, mashallah, the basket. If you are shopping for Hasanat, the basket will be overflowing. That's for the student. But who caused that? You. You who A, sacrificed. Sacrificed time because I talk to some brothers and sisters and say, Wallah, I don't have time. But you made it your responsibility and your priority to make sure that your son or your daughter or your person in home to go and learn. And you sacrifice money. And Allah subhanahu, you are an investor. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that he will reward all of us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. The second one. I want to mention this because I want to share with you our collective responsibility to engage in teaching our children. As sister mentioned, I am an assistant principal in a high school every single day every I have some teachers here every single periods during the transition from one classroom to another I see a flow we have about 3,000 students in school I see a flow of students and how do I identify Muslim students when it comes to sisters is with hijab when it comes to brothers, I just may use my, you know, kind of uh, intuition and I say looks like Pakistani, looks like Albanian, looks like, looks like, looks like. Sometimes I'm accurate in my assumptions, sometimes not. But let's go to the side of the sisters. And I will open a parenthesis here. One day I was driving, long time ago. And I hope you learn from this and you do it as well. While I was walking or driving, I saw people walking, crossing the street. You know, as you drive, you see many people. And I noticed sometimes I see sisters with their hijab. And I said, Subhanallah. Since then, I made a promise with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I hope each one of you here to make that promise. 
I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time I see a sister with hijab, I am going to say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al And every time I say that, and I keep saying it until I forget, I get distracted. I promised, or I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me 50% of those hasanat and give 50% to that sister. Because if it were not for that sister wearing hijab as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us, I would not have been reminded to say that. And I hope, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we go to the day of judgment, those sisters will see many hasanat and they don't know where it's coming from. And then I hope and I pray to Allah to say, here is a brother who said, because of you said that. So I'm sharing this because this is for me, is like, don't forget remembering your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please, if you see it, sisters and brothers, when you are driving and you are distracted by what I have to do, what is my next thing, wah, 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 and you see a sister walking, say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwwata And as you know, this is the recommendation, the advice from Sayyidina Ibrahim when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Isra al-Mi'raj, when he was coming, he gave him this advice. Why am I mentioning this? Because the way we behave is another way how to engage our children in learning. Sisters, God bless you. Because when you put that hijab, that's your identity. Man, I can walk outside, no one will know who I am. But you, mashallah, the moment you step out, you are uh, making a da'wah in an indirectly way. The second thing that I want to say is I work here since September 9th. We started this program. And we have Brother Misad and Brother Abdul Rahman, who is not here. here. <laughs> MashaAllah, welcome. You, you made it. The African time gives you the, 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 the benefits. So Brother Abdul Rahman and Brother Misad, this is like an imam. They say, we need to start this program. I am one of the types that I, I need structure and systems to work. And those who are teachers here, they know that. Period this, you have to do this. After that, that. And I am very afraid of responsibilities because I need, if I do something, I need to commit myself to doing that thing. And we were back and forth, and we started. So I want to share one thing, and I hope you do not misunderstand it or misconstrue it. I am working here from September 9th till now. I come here 9.30, I leave around 2 o'clock. I am not paid for this service. I'm going to say this again. I am not paid. And I don't want to be paid. Because I recognize my, my shared, our shared responsibility as an educator, when I see this in high school, and I see some sisters and brothers, mashallah, and I see the other ones, I say, what did we miss in upbringing our children? Okay, we're gonna be quiet there? Okay. So I made that commitment because I feel I am as responsible as you are to educate our children at our next generation. And on this occasion, I will ask you, if you can volunteer Saturday and Sunday, whatever way you can volunteer. You can help us with decoration sometimes. You can come and take two students and teach them something. You can, I don't know, buy pizza for students on Saturday and Sunday. You can buy water, anything you can. It could be money, it could be time, it could be anything, because that's how we're gonna grow and that's how we're gonna expand our community and build that network and make sure that our students are learning. The second thing, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ خَيْرُكُمْ 
man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa'allama. The best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has learned the Qur'an and has been teaching or has taught the Qur'an. The best one of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is someone who has learned the Qur'an and teaches the Qur'an. So by volunteering, inshallah, you will be one of those. And then for our children, when they learn Qur'an, and I will share with that with you in a, I allow them to teach another person what they learn so that we can maximize those benefits. What's going sorry. on? Yeah. I'm sorry, um, sorry, mashallah, we're having more people. So what can I do to help my son? It's not too late, but the, the answer is too late. We talked to you multiple times, and you thought that nothing was wrong with your son. And if there is something wrong, it's because of the outside environment. And that sister, that brother, were right. Because the environment that we create, and the environment that is created for us, is influencing us, whether we like it or not. So if we don't have the immunity system, if we don't have this culture of vaccination against the virus of other behaviors that do not belong to our religion, that we don't want for our children regardless of our faith background, then our children will be contaminated. So, we need to create an environment for our children at home and we need to send them. It doesn't have to be ikfa. You can send them to any Islamic school, to any masjid, to learn Quran, to learn Arabic, to learn the values, because that will be their navigation system, to navigate this complex environment where there is no distinction between a man and a woman, and you all hear the fluent gender, and so on and so forth, and there is no distinction between good values and bad values because everybody has the right to express himself or herself in whichever manner. We need that vaccination at home. Please do that and that's part of your engagement to engage our children in this. And any learning needs to have an environment and it has to be assessment. How can we evaluate ourselves as educators? Because believe it or not, you parents, the house is the first school. The mother, especially the mother, she is the first teacher. The father is the sub-teacher. For those who teach, they know the, the joke, sub-teacher. When the teacher is not there, we show up. And that you need to instill whatever it is in your children, so inshallah, in collaboration with Al Masjid, Islamic school, uh, house, we can create this child, a whole child, that will have this a social, emotional, spiritual, intellectual compass and support so that they can manage to survive in the storm when you are not there. When they go to school and they say, well, let's do this and that, let's have sin, they say no. Why? Because from inside they know it is not halal. Inside they know it is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's teaching. From inside they know that it is against the Prophet sallallahu teaching. And not only they know it is against, but they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know they love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They know Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has recommended and instructed us to love our parents. And they are going to behave in a way to please, to make you happy. And you will be, insha'Allah, among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward because you sow the seeds of this education in them. And then we need, the, as I said, the assessment. Once a while, call your child. What did you learn? What, is, what, what does it say if we are talking about Quran? Anything that they learn, but especially we are contextualizing this our conversation in religious uh, education. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all of us and 
to really reward us for our intentions as, the, as uh, Allah, sub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Just remind them you are a reminder. If they want to do it, do it and you are rewarded. If they don't want, they will have consequences as well. So you, you do your part and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will crown your efforts with success. And we hope and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our children will be the best that we are dreaming of and thinking about. The last thing I would say, insha'Allah in this program, uh, we are trying to create like fun, uh, supportive environment for our children. Uh, we have a brother every Saturday Sometimes, not every Saturday, Sunday, he will go and buy pizza for our children and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward him and reward them. If you can contribute in whichever way to help us, help the children of our community, our children, uh, we will greatly appreciate that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward all of us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to bless us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.